I am often asked by people in the media, how do I rate the budget 2016-17 on a scale of 1 to 10? And my answer is very simple. Let's first understand what was the focus of the government in this budget. And the government was very clear that its focus was on four key areas. First and foremost, they wanted to focus on the bottom of the pyramid. Number two, they wanted to focus on the agriculture sector. Number three, they wanted to focus on cashless transactions and the tech associated with that which became especially important after demonetization. And number four, they wanted to focus on infrastructure and it was hoped, and it is hoped rather, that if you spend more on infrastructure in the long term, there will be a boost to the economy. So if I rate the budget on those four key focus aspects, I would rate it a seven out of 10. For the real estate sector, what was therefore important and tying up with the key focus areas was the bottom of the pyramid, or affordable housing segment wherein lies 90% of the demand for real estate, especially in the residential sector. The government has provided infrastructure status to affordable housing segment, which is good news for developers of affordable housing. It provides them access to greater capital at a lower rate, longer tenure, greater moratorium period. And what it does for the consumers of affordable housing sector is the government has provided interest subvention for a loan up to 6 and 9 lakh rupees respectively by providing 3 to 4 percent interest subvention. The government has ensured that this money is uh, given to the people who want to buy affordable housing by capitalizing the National Housing Bank by 23,000 crore rupees. The government of India has set a new precedence with the 2016 and 17 budget. They have clubbed the railway budget along with the main budget. What it allows the government to do is to budget and design for multimodal systems of transportation and the warehousing associated with it. Of significant importance to the government is, the urban, is urban transportation. And the government therefore wants to lay down a new Metro Rail Act. It also wants to modernize railway stations and monetize vacant unused railway land parcels. The government wants to build new airports or modernize airports in tier 2 and tier 3 locations. It will invest significantly in tourism, especially tourism in religious circuits and interestingly it will launch Incredible India Phase 2 which was a very successful marketing plan. For significant importance to private investors or private developers in the infrastructure segment is the dispute resolution mechanism. The government has taken cognizance of this. It is extremely important to have a good dispute resolution mechanism and the government will bring in a new act in this financial year. Other benefits for the real estate sector in 2016-17 budget include the applicability of long-term capital gains tax now being applied from the second year rather than the third year. This is good news for real estate investors. Also, there is good news for landlords getting into joint development agreements Notional capital gains will now be applicable once the project gets the completion certificate rather than from signing the joint development agreement. Will all of these boost the real estate sector? The answer is only in the affordable segment and that too if the state governments provide incentives such as more FSI and availability of good land parcels. Unused government land should be used for affordable housing segment. The industry per se was hoping for the finance minister to reduce corporate and personal income tax. This was because of demonetization and the stated position of the finance minister, which was to reduce corporate tax to 25% from the current 30% by 2020. The finance minister did reduce taxes for small and medium enterprises to 25%. Unfortunately, nothing was done for corporates and nothing of significance for the personal income tax. Demonetization, it is hoped, will increase the tax base, therefore provide the government with more revenue and an opportunity for the government to reward the honest taxpayer by reducing personal income tax, probably in line with corporate tax at 25%. This would have led to more consumption, more consumption in the market and therefore led to a boost to the economy, which in turn is good for real estate. Unfortunately, that was a good opportunity missed.